Do you have soil in your garden or in any planters that looks like this? Dry, dusty, practically lifeless. Dry soil, especially if it's low in organic matter, will not produce good crops. It can be lacking in life, in nutrients and moisture, and really needs to be fixed before you plant anything in it. I'm gonna show you how I'm fixing the soil in this planter today, how I'm planting it up as well, and what I'll be doing to keep it healthy and productive. The soil is so dry. I don't think I've worked with worse, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. About three months ago, we bought this new house and a lot of garden items had been left here, including the greenhouse behind me, the shed that we just recently renovated. There's a lot of land here as well, which will become more garden space. But right now I'm focusing on creating more plantings around the kitchen because around the kitchen, so just a few steps away from where you're cooking and preparing food, is the best place to be growing things like salad leaves and culinary herbs. And that's because of convenience. Just nipping outside and harvesting at will will really help you to start using and experimenting with flavors a lot more. Now, alongside this lovely AstroTurf patio, which was also left here, is this concrete planter. And up until yesterday, it was planted, well, it was self-planted with dock and foxgloves, which were lovely and I've been enjoying and the bees have been enjoying all summer. And also a big clump of crocosmia. And crocosmia is a garden plant. I think it's from South Africa originally, but in any case, it loves the climate here and it spreads everywhere. It's one of my least favorite plants. So I removed all of those plants and what I found is that they were all growing fairly shallowly. The dock root was the exception because it does have long tap roots, but this soil was just so compacted and dry and I was surprised that anything was really growing in here. I guess only the hardiest types of wild and even cultivated plants could. But I want to use this space for growing useful plants, for growing things that we can eat. And so I need to get it into much better nick before I plant the sage and thyme in here that I have planned for this space. Now they've been living in containers since the move and I want to give them a bit more space to spread out. I'd also like to plant some more seeds, so herb seeds around them, see how they do. But I can't do anything with this space until I fix this soil. Now fortunately, fixing it is relatively quick and I'm going to do it just now. And then I can plant in it and then take measures to keep the soil healthy and moist afterwards. So first step was clearing it. I've also made sure that the soil isn't compacted. Although it's dry, you can see it's, it's pretty uh, loose now. It was hard as a rock yesterday. I was really excavating at it. Let's just say that it was difficult to even dig it. So I was using a hand tool to kind of bust it up. There are still some clumps in it. I've got clay soil here at the house and there are some stones. I'm not too concerned about the stones. The, the larger ones I'll, I'll pick out as I spot them. But the next step is adding a bit more moisture. Moisture is the bringer of life. And as far as what I need to do now is I need to make sure that the soil is moist all the way through. And I've just sprayed a little bit on right now. And you think, wow, it looks wet, it's sorted. But if I just dig down here in the center, you can see it's still really dry. So that means when you are wetting the soil, you need to be very thorough and soak it and dig it over and then soak it again. And the amount of water that you're, you'll use will be different based on the planter or the garden bed. 
um, the size of your watering can. Just get it to the point where when you're digging it over, and you can dig down to about a spade's depth like that, it's all fairly moist or that you can incorporate it and get it to a nice moist texture. We've added moisture, but soil on its own doesn't hold on to moisture. It dries out and it'll go back to that same state in no time. But adding compost will help to create a bulk within the soil. This is like a sponge. It hangs on to moisture and it's also filled with nutrients. You can use homemade garden compost. You can use mushroom compost from mushroom farms. You can use bagged compost. We've just moved into this house. I don't have any homemade garden compost ready at the moment. So I'm using bagged and this is a peat free mix. And all I'm gonna do is push it into this bed and then dig it in. It's important that we dig it into this soil because it needs it. It needs that structure, especially in a planter scenario. If you are out in the garden and you want to improve your soil, you don't have to dig it in. You can just lay it on the top and worms will bring it down into the soil for you. For this bed, which is about, I guess that's about two feet wide by what? About six foot long. That's just about a wheelbarrow load of compost. And I'm just going to pull it out into all the corners and then I'm gonna dig it in now. This is really lovely stuff. Should be for the price. <laughs> and by mixing it with the soil, you are essentially creating a really nice mix of that crushed rock, which is what soil is, and the organic matter. So compost is made out of the remains of plants that have been broken down and wood, food, if you are composting at home and doing kitchen scraps, other types of waste as well. You can also use aged manure, which is one of my favorite composts to use. And then get that really worked in. This is gonna take me a few minutes, so we're gonna fast forward. I'm pretty happy with that mix. It's about a, a one to one mix, I would say, this ratio, at least here on the surface. So it's one part compost to one part the soil that was already in this planter. And right now I'm just leveling it out and trying to break up any of the last clumps that are here on the surface. You can clearly see where the compost is and where the soil is because the soil here, it is just such a dull brown color. But that will change with time. With moisture and nutrients in this bed, worms will recolonize it and work it back into a really nice soil medium. Right, the next step, the exciting step, we're gonna put some plants in here. And I just have them sat over here at the side, a couple of thyme and a sage for now. So let me just grab them and put them in situ. I think this one here, this one's been living in a, in a pot for a while, but this one has only been in a pot since I took down the herb spiral. This was a, a time that was in the herb spiral, but I'm gonna plant it here because I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do with the herb spiral just yet. Oh, I think that will do perfectly. Now I'm not immediately planting them. I'm putting them out here in their pots first just to make sure that the spacing is all right. And I think that that's good. If you planted one and then you bring in the next one in and then the next one and you find you've run out of space, you can understand why it's just easier just to set them out here and have a look first. Okay, so I'm gonna get these planted next and then we'll go into the next step. I 
that's looking really good. I'm pleased with that. Sage in the middle, a thyme on either side. All of them will get quite a bit bigger, especially the sage in the center. It can get pff, double that size in all directions pretty much. So out to here, provided that the soil is nutrient rich enough and it's getting enough moisture, which hopefully it will. And speaking of moisture, what I'm gonna do next is water it in again. And this is just because I've turned over that soil when I've been digging these plants in. It's starting to dry out already and these plants need a really good drink. The final step is top dressing this bed with yet more compost. Now this is called mulching. And I think that there's a lot of misunderstandings and misinterpretations as to what mulch is because I think in certain parts of the world, people tend to refer to wood chip or bark as mulch as more of a decorative type element. But mulch has a function. It reduces weeds because it stops those weeds from germinating. It's a, it's a heavy weighted layer. But if you use the right kind of mulch, like compost, it can hold moisture in. It can also feed the soil underneath because of the nutrients that will be pulled down by worms and water. And it just helps to keep the soil underneath moist. And oftentimes when you see a vegetable garden that's really productive and there's lots of bare soil, it'll look like it's bare soil, but it's actually this. It's just compost. And without putting on this layer of compost, so this is, I'm gonna to try to get one and a half inches deep here. Without it, that soil will just get really dry and lifeless all over again. It's, it's a quite sunny space here. I've got these concrete blocks making up this planter. So anything that I can do to help retain water is going to help my plants that are growing in this space and this will benefit your plants too. So no matter where you're gardening, in containers or out in the garden, laying a layer of mulch on the soil is going to help retain that water. Now you can use compost like I'm using right now, and this is great for my climate. So in Britain, compost is the best mulch to use. But if you live in a really arid climate, then straw, or even pine needles, people use them. Um, you can use those as mulch as well. Or in a pinch, you can also use cardboard and newspaper, although that doesn't last as long and it doesn't look as nice either. Compost is probably the best as far as nutrients, retaining water, looking nice. And also, if you're making it yourself, then you can have a good supply on hand. You know where it's come from and it will save you a lot of money. I am so pleased with how this has turned out. It is so rewarding taking a space that was pretty much unused and then just through the simple action of adding compost and water and a bit of time and effort, transforming it into something that is going to be productive and useful for us. The bees are going to love the thyme flowers so they're not missing out on anything. And I will continue to water this as well to make sure that it stays in a really good state. It's important to keep that soil hydrated. So no matter whether you're growing in containers or large planters like this, you do need to keep on top of watering. Rain isn't enough, especially in the heat of summer. And when I do water into this, I will be watering straight through this mulch and it will be going down into the soil and get locked in. Now, compost is the magic ingredient with fixing dry soil and revitalizing soil. And if you want to save money, you should make it yourself. And I have a, a very easy method for making compost. And I would recommend that you check out that video next if you would like to learn how you can transform kitchen scraps and garden waste and cardboard into black gold. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next week for another here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.